kudos, Alec Ablin, one of the top coaches in college football, under 30 years old. He's among the 30 under 30 coaches. This is a, a, a pretty impressive list. I'm not at all surprised that he is on it because there aren't a lot of coaches at big time programs that are under 30. Usually you don't get your big break until maybe your early or mid thirties. So what do you think of uh, Alec Ablin or do we really even know at this point what he's able to bring to the table? The thing that I like about Alec Ablin, and this was a list by uh, 247 sports, but the thing I like about Alec a lot is that he's worked with the offensive line extensively throughout his career. So I think he's going to make, um, I think he's going to make Tennessee's tight ends better run blockers, better pass protectors. And then ultimately the routes they run is going to determine by a guy named Josh Heupel. So he doesn't really have to do a lot there. So he could have as much success as any of these coaches under 30 years old, because he, he seems to be, in just the perfect position to succeed. And I have no reason to believe that he won't based off the people that I've talked to, but what did you make of him being on this list? And then we'll play a little bit of four downs. Yeah, I, I, I was okay. So I'm with you. It's hard to find 30. I feel like it's hard to find under 30 year old assistant coaches. So you wonder if the list is somewhat a default list where they, they were like the process of elimination was, well, Josh Heupel picked him. So he must be <laughs> beyond there. Yeah, like the 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 searches you do sometimes for prospects and you say like from this state or from whatever or class of 2025, like maybe they just ran a search of assistant coaches under the age of 30, if that database exists. Yes, that's exactly what might have happened. <laughs> but I will say this, Josh Heupel's last under 30 promotion was Kelsey Pope. And Kelsey Pope turned Cedric Tillman into a thousand yard receiver turn Jalen Hyatt into a Bolitnikoff award winner. And we can question that, but I, I think what he did with Tillman is more impressive than what he did with Hyatt. But at the same time, I think he's proven himself and look at what Tennessee's doing on the recruiting show with wide receivers now with Kelsey Pope running it. So I think high full promoting Ablin, it, this is one of those things where maybe you do say, I trust Josh Heupel because of what he's done with his promotions in the past. So he must know something. So, I'm high on him. I think Ablin does understand certain blocking teams. You bring that up and kind of, and, and it's actually was really detail oriented with a lot of the RPO stuff, which is kind of a big deal. So I actually think this is a good hire too. Yep. Um, all right, here we go. So it is time for four downs and it deals with Tennessee's coaches and where do they stand with those guys? And it's brought to you by our friends at Sports Treasure Treasures right there in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. It's in the Halls area. If you're curious about that, the largest sports card and memorabilia store in the Southeast opened in 1989. Check them out, Sports Treasures under new management. And check out their Facebook page because they've got all kinds of incredible items. They do signings with Hendon Hooker and other N NIL guys and. Uh, they, they treat you fair, and that's the cool part about it. Again, Sports Treasures, check out their Facebook page. They bring you four downs. Four downs. Four questions. Four answers. The Dave Hooker Show. Four. 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 Downs. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. All right, so Ablin makes the top 30 under 30 coaches list. What down is it, Cooper Mays, so we can take a look at the rest of Tennessee's coaching staff? Coop here, first down. Thank you, Cooper. Tennessee's most valuable coach is? Oh, you mean outside of Josh Heupel? <laughs> I'm just going to try to get you on that one. Yes, outside of Josh Heupel. It's Tim Banks. It's Tim Banks. I think it's Tim Banks as well. What down is it now, Coop? Cooper Mays here. Second down. Who will be at UT the longest? What current coach will be at Tennessee the longest? Glenn Ellerby. I think if Glenn Ellerby wasn't going to get promoted to offensive coordinator, I think he's a – which there's nothing wrong with this, but he's a career line coach, like Rodney Garner on the other side. He's a career offensive line coach. He's Mike Berry. He's Josh Heupel's Mike Berry. That's a throwback name for you. Yeah, that is a throwback name. 
uh, guy that uh, showed me uh, ha- like the way you're supposed to use your hands as an offensive lineman and physically started like uh, hitting me and stuff. And he goes, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Physical contact, it's uncomfortable. I'm like, no, I'm really okay with it. Before but, we go to third down, that was the biggest transition from 97 to 98. That's the biggest difference was hiring Mike Berry as O-line coach. And look at the difference in how the line played versus Florida. In the next yeah, year. and 98 to 99 was going from Kevin Ramsey to Larry Slate. All right, what down is it, Coop? <laughs> Jesse Center Cooper Mays here. Third down. Thank you. Who is most likely to leave? What coach is most likely to leave? You might say an offensive coordinator like uh, Alec Golish. But I don't think Ablin's anywhere close to being ready for that, nor would he be considered. Who do you think's most likely to leave the soonest? Jerry Mack. And I say Jerry Mack because I think that even though he's a running backs coach and I don't see a coordinator future for him whatsoever, I see a smaller school that wants a great recruiting coordinator or a great recruiter to be their head coach. And uh, by the way, Dave, you I don't know how much you've covered coaching hires at smaller schools. Smaller schools make this mistake all the time. They hire recruiting coordinators or elite recruiters to try to bring the top talent to the small schools. Small schools, if you're listening, hire the X's and O's genius. You're not going to out-recruit the big boys. I don't care how good of a recruiter somebody is. I think it's Tim Banks. I think at some point having to put your guys out there 80 plays a game is going to get frustrating to him. And he's going to get a head coaching job maybe at a – a uh, smaller school, or he's going to maybe want to be a defensive coordinator where his guys don't have to run 80 plays. So I would say that's the most likely and maybe the most, well, as we referred to earlier, the most valuable coach on Tennessee staff, not named Josh Heupel. What down is it, Coop? All SEC center Cooper Mays here. Fourth down. Who will have the best career among all assistant coaches currently on Tennessee staff? A couple of these careers are nearing the end Uh, i'm gonna take this one first i think it's tim banks i just i i really like him and his ability to get his players rallied when they know they have to play as as much as they do i think you know what i think of some of his twists and stunts and blitz packages which i know he doesn't want to have to use as much but i do think it's a part of his dna uh, a column that you wrote addressed that. I think it's part of his DNA. I think he's always going to use twists and stunts, but he doesn't want to have to bring five and six guys repeatedly. So I will. I think Tim Banks is going to be a successful head coach somewhere. Um, I really do. I think I, I just I like the way he handles his business. I like him a lot. I'm a fan of Tim Banks. I still think that half of coaching success though is getting the right opportunities. Um, and I would say that Tim Banks to me. I don't think he's going to get the same fair shots because being the defensive coordinator holds you back a little bit at Tennessee. So I think it's going to be Joey Halsley still. I think because I think Joey Halsley is going to get a good job. Like Alex Golish got a good job in South Florida. That's a good first job for a head coach because it's very easy to recruit in Florida and you're at a smaller school. So he's going to be able to build his profile. Halsley's going to get one of those jobs where you worry that Tim Banks will get a job that's just a really bad group of five school that you just can't win at. Yeah. That's yeah, that, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Um, and then it, it really, I think it depends on Golish. If Golish has success, I think you're right, but it would be Halsley. If Golish doesn't have success, then everybody says it's just Hypel's offense and it might be Banks. So, really, I think his Golish's success moving forward is really, really the key to this, right? Yes, I agree. I agree. What Golish does is the absolute key to what do, what's done with Halsley afterward. But I got to be honest, I think Golish is going to have success because he's running the right offense and he's in Florida and he's coaching a group of five school in Florida. And Dave, you know this, it ain't that hard to recruit a group of five school in Florida. You need gas money. No, it's, it's not hard at all. And I think he'll have success, but there's always a part of me that will wonder until I see otherwise is this just Josh Heupel's offense? Um, I think we saw what happened when the transition happened from David Cutcliffe to Randy Sanders. That was David Cutcliffe's offense. Fair? Yes, but that David Cutcliffe was a, didn't have a specific system. He was just a really good offensive coach who adapted to his personnel really well. Josh Heupel has a system, and we've seen that. Now, even though I think Josh Heupel is the best at running it, 
we've seen that system emulated in so many different levels of football across the country at this point. Uh, Fordham tried it a few years ago, and Fordham has now been dominating at their level. So I think the system itself is somewhat infallible. I think Josh Heupel is better than other coaches at running that system, but I, the system is proven at this point. 